This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now live from Studio C, it's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. What's up? BYU Sports Nation is live from Studio C, your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Tuesday, August 23rd. Thanks for being here. I'm Jerem Jordan, teamed up with the guy who is live from New York, Spencer Linton, what's up, dude? That skyline is as pretty of a background as we've ever seen on this program. You know what? We spent a good deal of time yesterday, once we finished with BYU Sports Nation, trying to find the perfect skyline location. We're technically in Hoboken, New Jersey, just across the river from the skyline. But you know what? Close enough. I could basically skip a rock over to New York. So we may as well just call it New York. But yeah, pretty cool that we have the capability and technology to do this for BYU Sports Nation. Show up in New York, cover some football, and then uh, come to the river, and we've got a live show with that backdrop. What's crazy is the studio makes, the green screen studio makes it look real, which is just crazy. I mean, (laughs) wind and everything, which is awesome, right? And last night you were at the Jets Falcon preseason game, of course. Um, You even took a photo with Zach I saw on social, which is great. Uh, we have we have interviews coming up, but how was it, man? How was it at MetLife? F- fantastic experience. Obviously, when we initially planned the trip, we expected that Zach would be playing. That did not happen as he got hurt very early in his first NFL preseason game. But to have Kai Nakua there with the Jets as well and Tyler Algier on the Falcons side, and I mean, the relationships that we have with those guys, Jerem, they matter, they carry on. And so it was really good to reconnect with those guys. And we have interviews with Kai and Tyler coming up and had a great conversation with Zach yesterday. He joked with me, he said, look, I can't work out as much. I think I'm getting fat. I've been eating terribly. I'm 218 <laughs> pounds. I got to go on a diet. Uh, but I mean, honestly, when he stood up in the suite where I was talking with him, like I just saw his back and I was like, that's not Zach. Like that's a linebacker. And he turned around and I was like, whoa, Zach, you, you look like a different person. You, I mean, you've put on some serious muscle. Came over and he was sitting next to Quinn and Williams and uh, a bunch of great guys there. He's obviously very anxious to get back. But yeah, Zach Wilson, uh, he didn't tell me specifically when he's hoping to be back, but he said that he's ahead of schedule, which is great news. So happy that it's not a more significant injury. And, you know, we'll be watching him play quarterback for the New York Football Jets along uh, with Kai on the defense. It's going to be a lot of fun this season. Can't wait to uh, hear those conversations coming up. Speaking of the rundown, Tyler Algier and Kai Nakua chatted with Spencer after the game. We've got that. How many Cougars showed up on Pro Football Network's top 100 college uh, players list, and how high are they? And what do we want more in a bowl game, a Breaking Bad tour or a rematch with Coastal? But first, don't call him crutchy, but Spencer starts us off with some headlines from New York. I was waiting for that reference to Newsies. BYU football will hold their final fall scrimmage today, or final fall scrimmage, and it's the final day of fall practice today, which is wild. They turn their attention to USF and that trip to Tampa as of tomorrow. I can't believe that BYU plays a game in about a week and a half, Jerem. Let's go, man. Let's get this thing rolling. I can. It's time, man. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm done with everything else but football, right? I, like football, women's volleyball, women's soccer. Let's get to it. Let's go. Jaron Hall is one of 38 players on the CFPA National Performer of the Year watch list. Also Hall, Blake Freeland, Clark Barrington named to the Pro Football Network's top 100 players list. Hall at 38, seventh QB listed. Freeland 51st and Sir Clark Barrington at 55th. As mentioned, Jerem, last night in the NFL preseason, Monday night football, Kai Nakua played for the Jets. Tyler Algier got some nice run with the Atlanta Falcons. Their specific numbers in the Jets' 24-16 win over the Falcons looked like this. Algier had six carries for 17 yards. Man, he got super close to the goal line and that first touchdown a couple of times. Couldn't break the plane. He had three catches for 12 yards as well, and Nakua had uh, an early tackle on special teams. In fact, I think he had the first tackle of the game for the Jets. Of note, good news for Kai's brother, Sampson, who has survived another round of cuts with the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, They did cut wide receiver DJ Montgomery and three other free agents, so Sampson hanging on. Hopefully that touchdown catch pushed him, uh, you know, above another cut line. Kai joked yesterday, he said, they got to throw him the ball more so they can show him what he's really about. 
we'll see if the Colts do that. Yeah, no receiver has, has ever said, you know what, I'm good. You've targeted me enough. Uh, let's spread the ball around, okay? Uh, women's soccer drops the spot from five to four, but still top five. Austin in the top drawer, uh, excuse me, four to five, yep. In the top drawer soccer poll after a 2-0 season opening win at Cal State Fullerton last week. Cougars continue the season at Ohio State, where they beat at home to start the season last year on Friday night. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Yesterday, we aired an interview with Spencer Linton where he talked to Caleb Hayes Saturday after a scrimmage at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Uh, if you missed it, check it out on YouTube. Fantastic conversation, 18 minutes worth. It was great. Hayes said this could be the best BYU defensive back group ever. Here's what he said. This DB group, I feel like it's going to, it's also, I feel like it's at least, at least top three, top two, honestly, <laughs> top one DB groups at BYU. Like I said, we haven't proved anything. You know, I can, I can, I, I can go off and on and on how much we, we're, we're going to be great and all that, but like, you know, it hasn't, we haven't hit like, you know, uh, the field yet, you know, we're not at USF right now to really showcase that, but all we can say, you know, just trust in the process. Okay, you get, yeah, apparently it's Philadelphia 76ers uh, from a couple of years ago, uh, but without Ben Simmons, which is great. Okay, Spencer, if the BYU defensive backs end up like Caleb Hayes is saying, top three, maybe top one, what would that look like? Well, I think first and foremost, Sharon, when you look back at the great defensive back groups that BYU has had in history, and I mean, a few immediately popped to mind, like early 90s with obviously Derwin Gray and Irvin Lee and Tony Crutchfield, those guys. Then you go to 96 with Omar Morgan and Tim McTire. And then back into 2012 and 13, like BYU had a really nice group of defensive backs and a really nice defense overall. I think you got to look at the talent that has gone to the next level. That's the first indicator. So, I mean, we, we might not know if they're the best group ever until we see them perform on the field well at BYU. But then if those guys can make the leap to the NFL as well, like their predecessors in the groups I mentioned earlier, because look, BYU like, historically just does not put a ton of defensive backs and secondary guys into the league. We made a huge deal about Chris Wilcox being the first draft pick as a defensive back in uh, 2021 uh, since Derwin Gray was drafted in the early 90s. I mean, it just it does not happen often. And so if we want to see BYU take that next step, I think you got to look at, at their ability to get guys to the next level. We've seen some free agents. Michael Davis was talked about yesterday. But that's kind of the first indicator to me is like, OK, yes, that's a sign of an elite defensive back group is that they can make that leap from BYU and playing well at BYU into the league. And then, of course, the results on the field. BYU, historically, when they went through all those whack years, I mean, they get into these just massive shootouts and, like, these high-scoring games, 58, 56, and 45, 41. Like, that was very, very typical. If we can see those numbers of BYU's opponents stay under the 24-point mark, the off-mentioned Bronco Mendenhall defensive mark, then that's a, that's a sign of a great defense, and I think specifically a great secondary because with the pass-happy options that BYU is going to see this year in the offenses they face, the ball's coming out quickly, and keep everything in front and keep opponents to 24 points or fewer, like that's another great indicator. I mean, we can look at interceptions and like big plays given up. You know, BYU hasn't given up a ton of big plays. Uh, the metrics that we see from Pro Football Focus would indicate that BYU has been really, really good over the past few years of not giving up like these huge game-breaking plays. Like that, that, that is another indicator. I would like to see a few more interceptions. Caleb Hayes said, I want to pick six. Pick sixes don't happen often to BYU. Now, if, if we could reverse the, the big plays that offense has put together and see BYU make some game-breaking defensive plays, some defensive touchdowns specifically from the secondary, that too is an obvious indicator of guys being able to break on a ball, make a play, and give BYU some immediate points. And so those are my initial thoughts. I mean, I know you've you spent a lot of time obviously looking at the stats, but I mean, does it come down to very, very specific analytics for you, or are you seeing it kind of more big picture like I am with those guys taking the next leap to the NFL? There's so few dudes that make it to the next level that I almost think it's unfair to try and assess BYU football in that way because then no one really qualifies or there's only been like a handful ever, maybe, right? This isn't D this isn't DBU, right? This isn't this is QBU, this is tight end U. 
So I think we almost have to assess a little differently this position, but I agree with you that the best secondaries that come to mind when we compare this group, should they be that good, is exactly what you said. It's 1990, uh, it's 2001, it's 1996, it's 2012. I love that one. Think about 2012, Jordan Johnson and Preston Hadley at the corners. Neither of the, those guys had a cup of coffee or a post them in the NFL, but they were great collegiate cornerbacks. Like, if you want to talk about one of the best cornerbacks in Bureau history is Tom Homo. Tom Homo had like a bunch of pick sixes, including in the 81 Holiday Bowl against Washington State, including against Georgia and that Herschel Walker offense in 82, where BYU almost won NFL in guy. the hedges. Yes, NFL guy, Super Bowl champ, one time as a player, three times as a coach for Tom, right? So, yeah, Derwin Gray played in the NFL for several years. It's not necessarily the NFL for me, per se. I, I think with this group, and think about this group, there's not a lot of BYU football teams who will have played a schedule like this in history, that 91 group, certainly, several independent groups. But to me, yeah, I look at interceptions. The secondary itself had 10 last year. That's a decent number. If they can get a few more, that's great. PBUs, 36 is a pretty good number. 12 from Caleb Hayes by himself, by the way. How about that? Yeah. Pass yeah. efficiency, um, it's not a secondary number only. It's the whole defense, but BYU was 54th. They can do better there. Yards per attempt allowed, 60th in the country. Again, that's the whole defense. But Cougar Stats has a good uh, metric that I like here. BYU opponents had 121 passes which weren't completed, so incompletions or interceptions last year. Of those, 52 were defended, batted down, intercepted, right? 43%, that rate, highest in the country. I wonder if this group's mm. better than we think. Obviously, the Caleb Hayes stat sticks out as well. We'll repeat it because it's so good, courtesy of Pro Football Focus. 18 times opposing quarterbacks threw 20-plus yards down the field at Caleb. Only one was caught. Third in FBS at 5.6%. So we like D'Angelo Mandel and Caleb Hayes and Gabe Judy Lally. At safety, Malik Moore is a baller. Ammon Hanneman steps in probably at that strong safety spot. And then you got to uh, consider Hayden, uh, Hayden Livingston. Micah Harper has moved uh, back to safety. Jacob Robinson, of course, moving up to corner, kind of that nickel guy. Talon Offrey is a guy who tours Achilles. He's going to be in the two deep. This is, this is a good group. Bill Shefflin, by the way, uh, two-time first-team all yeah, whack, yeah. got hurt his rookie year in the NFL. He might be the greatest uh, you know, secondary player in BYU history. Like, Bill Shefflin obviously blocks the punt in the Miracle Bowl, which he's known for, but he was incredible. So there have been some really good secondaries. I really like the talent that BYU has now uh, uh, in the group. I'm, I'm very confident in, in four to five guys. When Michael Harper gets healthy, he adds to that group. I'm stoked. And when BYU has a good secondary and you're not giving up big plays, guess what? You're going to be in the biggest games like Notre Dame, like at Oregon, like Baylor and Arkansas. Yeah, we should note that BYU's athletic director, Tom Homo, just gave Bill Shefflin a shout-out for sure. That was a very talented secondary in the early 80s for the Cougars. Like, I know Jimmy Mack gets a lot of the credit. That was a really, really good defense. So you got to appreciate Tom Homo looking out for his guy, Bill Shefflin. Jerem, I love the guys that you bring up on this current roster. The defensive back group, I feel like it's, we just kind of go round and round with this record. Like, I'm sorry if you're tired of hearing about it, but we think that this, we kind of tend to agree with Caleb Hayes. We think this could be like a top three group all time because, and you talked about the difficult schedule that they're going to face this year. I feel like BYU and this group are ready to face the schedule this year because of what they faced last year and what they accomplished against yes. last year's schedule. Albeit against a down Pac-12, but still, like, seven power Bump fives, Jerem. Six and one against seven power fives, and they put up some pretty good numbers. So I, I, I'm not, I don't feel like it's too difficult for this group to handle. They've, they've played and accomplished a lot of meaningful things in meaningful games with big-time snaps. I trust Caleb. I mean, he said, look, we're not scared. We're not scared of anybody. We have seen basically everything. We have seen some elite receivers. And going back a few years before, BYU taking on the likes of USC and Tennessee with Juwan Jennings and all of these dudes that are in the NFL now. Like, they have seen so much over the last few years. They've built to this, this wealth of experience. It's time for it to pay off, and I think it will. And we're not saying, you know, there are three first-round picks in this. Like, maybe there are some NFL no, draft picks no. here, and that's exciting. But this against BYU historically, 
this group stacks up, which is very exciting. Okay, what are your expectations for this year's BYU DB group? That's our question of the day. Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Twig Your Stone on Twitter. Continue to weigh in on Facebook and Instagram as well. I expect to see them limit explosive plays. If they can stop the long passes, it will make the opposing yeah. offense work hardest, lead to sacks, TFLs, more time for the BYU offense to make plays. Like the university and church, the secondary does not take big <laughs> risks, right? They embody what this place is about, which is aggressive, but also going to limit too much. And, the, and sometimes people just want BYU to blitz all the linebackers. Guess what? That's stupid. This secondary has been really successful for a long time. We expect them to have a uh, great season. We're excited to watch all these talented guys that BYU has gathered. And it continues to get, yeah. that room continues to get more full. It's awesome. So if, if you want to hear an aggressive number and a stat that I'll be watching closely, and it's because I've discussed these with the guys in that room, that is, if BYU can maintain as close to possible of like a one and a half touchdown passes given up to one interception ratio, they're in a great place. So let's say BYU gives up 20 touchdown passes this season, yeah. and they have like, I don't know, 12 or 14 interceptions. Jerem, they're gonna they're gonna be in a really good position to win a lot of games, and that's very aggressive. But they feel like they can they can limit the number of big plays and have more interceptions this year. Uh, I mean, so th those are some stats to watch. I, I really, really am excited about what they can do. All right, Jerem, uh, let's keep it rolling here. Coming up, you know, as promised, Kai Nakua, Tyler Algier last night, had the opportunity to speak to both of those guys in the locker room last year. You're not going to want to miss what they have to say. Absolutely. Those conversations with Kai and Tyler Algier coming up as BYU Sports Nation continues on BYU TV. You wasn't invited. Say you come to play. I dare you to try it. You don't want to try me. Don't step up to my team. Yeah, out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Out of the way. My name is Spencer Finnegan, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart Mary, and there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships, I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford, think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From accidents to wills, from bankruptcy to business law, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. There are things happening in Seaburg. They care more about people spending money than they do about people getting sick. If they're causing toxic pollution, it is everyone's fight. We can't just let them get away with it. If anyone can figure this out, it's my brother. Friends don't abandon each other. Fine. Be heroes. I know what it's like to love someone so much you'd do anything for them. Whatever happens, I'm glad we're facing it together. Me too. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. 10th ranked BYU women's volleyball gets their season started this weekend. Watch as the Cougars host Ryder Friday at 2 Eastern live on the BYU TV app. Jerem Jordan will have the call. I had to rep volleyball today as my shirt of choice in New York City on the banks of the Hudson River. 
technically in New Jersey, but across from New York City. I am Spencer Linton, Jerem Jordan, hanging out back in Studio C. You see the Empire State Building here. I love technology, and I love the ability that we have to come all the way out here to gather interviews with guys like Kai Nakua of the New York Jets and talk to Zach Wilson and Tyler Algier of the Atlanta Falcons. NFL preseason game last night. Our first interview today is with Kai Nakua. I spoke to him on uh, advice he has for his brothers and much more. Take a listen. Kai, great to catch up with you at MetLife Stadium as a member of the New York Jets. How would you explain how uh, camp has gone for you as a Jet thus far? Uh, it's good to see you too, and uh, camp camp has been really good. Uh, it's been a grind, you know. That's how camp is, but you know, guys getting after it each and every day, trying to stack days and get better each day. And us as a defense, we're pushing the offense, and offense is pushing us to get better. So it's been it's been really fun, and um, just the, the competitive nature that we're bringing to the Jets has been awesome. You're making a transition from safety to linebacker. How do you feel about the transition and changing positions? I actually kind of love it. I uh, kind of wish I was backer a lot sooner, which when I first got recruited to BYU, I was supposed to be a backer, so next time, next time we'll get it right. <laughs> but I don't know. The transition's been uh, really good, just learning from the guys in the room, trying to get down the footwork and the reads. They're a little bit faster than I, uh, when I was at safety, so seeing the line and seeing the 300-pound guys coming at me is a little bit quicker, so I got to shoot my hands and stuff. But the transition's been really good and just getting more reps and getting a better feel for everything. So. Where do you see yourself making an impact for this Jets squad? Because I saw you on special teams tonight, along with obviously playing linebacker. Um, I think, you know, I got to be a good uh, will linebacker, sandbacker, and at the same time, I got to make plays on special teams. And I know special teams has kind of been my thing, so it's just go out there and make plays, run and hit, and that's what I do. So, What's it like to have another BYU teammate in Zach Wilson with you here in New York? Uh, it's been awesome. You know, we get to see each other every day, just chop it up a little bit, but say say hi and talk about the Cougs. So it's it's been fun, and I know he's uh, he's out right now and kind of banged up, but he, he'll he'll get back on the field and he'll he'll take care of his recovery like a pro. So we'll we'll be waiting for him back on the field. I talked to him earlier tonight, and we both agreed that as the eldest of the Nakua brothers in the NFL right now, seeking that dream, you you kind of in a way are, are an example to those guys, but you're you're the most business oriented. Would you agree with that? Uh, I would probably say so, yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. I mean, once Puka gets there, I'm sure he'll probably pick it up too, because he's, he's kind of like me, but Saps is the fun and free one, but I would say for sure I'm the business one, but I'm just here, you know, try to help the guy, help them, you know, when they get here. Now Samson's here and just giving him advice. This is what I did, you know, these are things that you could do to save your body, you know, get your recovery going. Get, like, that's kind of what I've been on him is like, take care of your body because this game is ruthless with hitting, each, hitting people. Like, we're flying around, hitting each other mm -hmm. full speed. So take care of his body, take care of his mind too, and just attacking every day. And Samson's doing a great job over there. I talk to him all the time. So great touchdown, by the way. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was in a meeting room and I screamed and everybody's like, what's going on? I was like, don't worry about it. My brother just scored. <laughs> so it was awesome. It was awesome. What advice do you have for Puka as he approaches what looks like could be a breakout season for him at BYU? For sure. Uh, Puka, he knows what to do. And it's, one, take care of everybody. Same thing that I've told Samson. And second thing, go ball. You know, you got to separate yourself from the rest of the guys that are out there, the guys that you're playing with, and bring guys along there with you, you know. He's got a bunch of receivers with him. Bring the young guys up. You know, they can learn from you. They can learn so much because he's been around the game. He's very smart with the game, too. So I told him, you know, do what you got to do. Bring guys along with you because that's going to help, you know, the Cougs elevate, help you elevate as a person. And, you know, I don't know if he wants to coach when he's done, but he'll figure that out when he's done. But he's, he's got a really bright future, and I'm ex super excited for him. So I can't wait to watch the season, honestly. It's going to be it's going to be amazing. You practiced all week against the Falcons and, of course, Tyler Algier. What's it like when you see your fellow BYU alumni brethren on the opposing sideline in the NFL? It's awesome to see. I mean, when I saw Tyler out there in practice, I, you know, I'm on the sidelines. It's the BYU right there. It's what we do, you know. It's, a, it's just running, making plays. But I love, I love seeing the Cougs out there. You know, we're gonna get a bunch more guys out, and Kalani's doing a great job out there getting the guys in the league. But having the Cougs in the NFL is, is a dream come true for everybody out here. So seeing the guys, always get to see them when we're coming off the field, talk to them, see how the family's doing, see how their body is, you know, because we know how this game is, and it's awesome seeing everybody. You've always stayed ready, and your path has been one with some twists and turns and winds and some slowdowns, and, you know, now you're a family man as well. Yep. Um, how have you been able to balance it all but, you know, stay ready when your name has been called? Because here you are again. Uh, really just my wife. She's been patient with me. You know, it, like you said, it's been a roller coaster, and 
just sharing with her how I feel sometimes, and sometimes I don't like to talk. She's like, what's going on? But, you know, I got to kind of let her know because I don't want to create tension in our in our relationship. But, like, she's been she's been my rock and just hold me down. And my family, you know, they're all keeping me positive when things aren't as what I want them to be, when things aren't, like, teams getting cut and whatever it may be. But my family and my, my wife, for sure. So, love you, babe. <laughs> The last question for you, Kai. What do you see for BYU football this season? Man, I see I see great things. I see, I mean, I wish I could be at every game. I hope I can be at every game. But if I'm at every game, that means I don't have a job. So, hopefully not. <laughs> but, I mean, I see them at least 11 wins. So, go do the thing, boys. Yeah. Well, Kai, great to catch up with you, man. <laughs> great to see you, too. Take care. Kai Nakua of the New York Jets. Great conversation there, Spence. That was awesome. First off, the uh, beard looks amazing. It's great to have two guys on the Jets. Kai has bounced around here and there in the NFL, right? But he's such a good athlete. It makes me wonder if 2016 should have been mentioned in our conversation of great uh, secondaries. Listen to this group. Kai Nakua, Zane Anderson, Michael Davis, all in the NFL, by the way, Micah Hanneman, and Dan Gonwoliku. That, that was a pretty good group Woo. there. Woo! That was a loaded group, and that season, Jeremy, you remember, BYU lost four games by a combined eight points, right? I mean, they were in every game. Of course, Taysom Hill and Jamal Williams played a role in that as well, but that, you're right. That was a great defense, and Kai was a big part of that, and I, I didn't realize that he was initially recruited to BYU as a linebacker, and now really? he's back at that original position. Yeah, interesting. He's, fly, he's flying around, man. He's flying around as a linebacker. He's kind of that nice hybrid model, and the, the Jets defensive coordinator really likes Kai. I, I mean, at worst, like, if he doesn't make the 53-man roster, he will, in my opinion, for sure be a practice player and a guy that's going to yep. get called up and play some meaningful snaps for the Jets this season. All right, brother. Let's keep things uh, going with our interview with Tyler Ledger. We literally had to sprint down the uh, – bowels of MetLife Stadium to, to get to Tyler Algier before he got on his bus, and we're glad that we found him. Our interview with Tyler Algier, who, frankly, not, not surprisingly, is certainly grateful to be playing in the NFL and playing his, what he calls, a small role. One-on-one -on -one with Tyler Algier. Tyler, um, you just got in with a week of practice uh, competing against the BYU guy, Kai Nakua alumni brethren. How was the week for you as a, as a Falcon and practicing against Kai and the Jets? No, shoot. It was a, lot of, it was a learning experience for sure. You know, a lot of learning, you know, just com competing. That's the big thing, competing against other people rather than just your teammates. So it was good. All right. Uh, another NFL preseason game for you in the books. Um, how would you feel or how do you feel about your progression from, from game one to game two and where you are at camp right now? I think it's just a learning. Just keep, just keep stacking the days. That's the, that's the quote of the year. Shoot. Just keep stacking them and Really just learning from each practice and just make make every rep count. I think that's the big thing. A lot of your BYU brethren are watching you close tonight and um, obviously rooting you on. Had a chance to talk to Zach, and he, he called you one of the best people that he knows. Um, he wasn't on the field with you, but what's it like to, to cross paths with those guys and, and see some, some BYU guys in a game like tonight? No, I think just uh, just that brotherhood that we created at BYU. So, uh, like even seeing Kai and all that, just um, like I know I didn't play with him, but I've been training with him and all that, and like whatever he was out there. So you know, I think that's probably like the big thing. You know, it's really like as if like obviously we we're not with each other every every day and all that, but I think with that brotherhood, it just feels like it should feel like I haven't, like I haven't seen them. Then. You know, you know, you know what I mean. Shoot. Now with the Falcons, as you push forward, um, what type of role do you see yourself uh, playing for this team this year? Shoot, whatever role, whatever role. Shoot, they have me as shoot. Yeah, I think that's the that's the big thing. Just doing whatever I can to get on the field, whether it's a first down, second down, or even like what I'm trying to progress to a third down back. So you know, just kind of doing doing it all, but you know, just making my way on special teams and all that as well. So now listen, BYU fans obviously are going to miss you dearly. You're not running the ball for them anymore uh, in Atlanta. But what do you see for your Cougars in 2022 with Jaron at quarterback and some new guys stepping in at running back? No, I know. No, I'm excited for you guys. Shoot, you know, I'll miss Cougar Nation and all, all their support. You know, hopefully they'll stay with me with my journey. But you know, I'll always be supporting. All right, Tyler. Any last uh, message you'd like to send to the BYU football team or the BYU Sports Nation? I'll just ball out, man. I'll be watching you guys. I miss y'all for real. <laughs> Tyler Algier with you. Hey. <laughs> We miss you too, Tyler. Yeah, uh, and we're, of course, Tyler, we're going to be with you on this journey, which is awesome. I love how raw that was, that you had to run down and get him. Also, he's got the smeared makeup, right, which is part of the deal, the uh, warrior mentality there. Keep stacking days. I think he's doing that. And, Spence, you can read into kind of 
limited action for him in preseason two ways. I think we read into it that the Falcons really like him. They don't want to overuse him. They don't yes. need to see him a ton. They're going to give him those reps in the regular season, at least as the number two, it looks like, which is super exciting. He, we, it's been a minute, right? We've been watching Jamal Williams, which is exciting. Tyson Williams a little bit with the Ravens and now perhaps the Colts. But it'd be good to have multiple running backs in the NFL, which is something, let's be honest, historically, BYU has not produced a ton of those guys. And now we have a couple in the NFL right now, which is awesome. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, you should see Arthur Smith, the new coach of the Falcons, when he talks about Tyler Algier. Like, he, he gets, like, I know it's, it's a cliche, but, like, his eyes light up. He gets a big smile on his face. They clearly value Tyler Algier and uh, what he can do. And, and I think that we saw a taste of that around the goal line last night. Tyler's just got that ability to just slip through the tiniest of little gaps, uh, you know, among defenses and, and just push the ball forward. He rarely loses yards, and they love that about him. I talked to uh, my guy Brett Jukes, who is over communications with the Falcons. He's a BYU graduate. Uh, he's the right-hand man of uh, Arthur Blanks, who owns the Atlanta Falcons. And he says, man, like, there's, there's a big reason why we drafted Tyler, and we think he's going to play a massive, massive role for the Falcons this year in their new-look offense with Marcus Mariota. So, I mean, Tyler, he downplays. He's like, yeah, let's do whatever they ask me to do, play whatever role. I think it's going to be a bigger role than, than maybe we were thinking as a rookie running back. They, they are very impressed with what he, what he has done this, thus far. And to your point, it's limited in the preseason because he's going to play a lot in the regular season. All right, what's coming up? All right, Jerem, uh, let's, you know, I mean, while we're in New York, we may as well discuss some more New York topics. Also, R.J. Young has put together his top five non-conference games of the season. Where does BYU fall on that list? And David Kahn previews AFR and discusses his favorite secondaries in BYU history as BYUSN from New York and Provo continues. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. Family, if you're looking for something new to watch, stop scrolling and start streaming. BYU TV has a ton of great options to binge together. From bold adventure to family drama and even a little fun, there's something for everyone. Binge entire series, experience all the feels, immerse in non-stop intrigue, and treat yourself to unexpected turns. Think you know BYU TV? We're just getting started. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. This is BYU Sports Nation to interact with the show and get great content throughout the day. Follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He is Spencer about to get on that boat in New York, just outside of Manhattan in Hoboken, New Jersey. I'm Jerem in good old Provo by Orem. Let's whip it. 
Google Whip Round is presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Fox's R.J. Young has Baylor and BYU. Jerem, listen to this as the fifth best non-conference game in the nation. Now, wait a second. Is it even BYU, BYU's top non-conference <laughs> game? No, it's not. Uh, that would be uh, Notre Dame. Ever heard of them? Uh, yeah, Baylor's, Baylor's a good game there. But to me, that's BYU's third most interesting game. If you're looking nationally, Oregon would be two and then Baylor. Yeah, I, I'd probably put BYU Baylor at number two just because they're the defending Big 12 champions and BYU's going into the Big 12 next year. So I understand why he's kind of saying like, hey, this is a precursor of what could, what something that could be big in the Big 12. But I'm with you. Number one is BYU Notre Dame. Uh, I, I just hope Notre Dame wins because I would love for them to be as highly ranked as possible and BYU as highly ranked as possible to just set up an epic showdown in Las Vegas. 100%. That'd be awesome. Okay, preseason bowl projections are out for BYU. Ready? ESPN's uh, Kyle Bonagura, New Mexico Bowl versus Fresno State. ESPN's Mark Sl mm -hmm. Schlebaugh, okay. Lending Tree Bowl versus Coastal Carolina, although they won't tell both teams until Wednesday. CBS's Jerry Palm, Frisco Bowl versus San Jose State. And Action Network's Brett McMurphy, the Birmingham Bowl versus South Carolina. P5, which of these is your favorite projection? I've been to Birmingham before. I like Birmingham. <laughs> it's a cool city. I like the Power 5 matchup with South Carolina. Um, but I, I, I kind of tend to lean towards Coastal Carolina. I just want BYU. This is like the revenge tour this year for BYU. So many big time matchups. Why not throw in Coastal into the scenario as well? I don't care where it is. Let's take down Coastal Carolina. If it's, it's not about me, but if it was, I would want the New Mexico Bowl because I want to go on the Breaking Bad Better Call Saul tour. I haven't been. I went to the 2010 yeah, New Mexico yeah. Bowl against UTEP, the Josh Quezada game, right? For sure. The Cody Hoffman game. For but, sure. Uh, yeah, I can see a rematch with Coastal with, like, way more time than you had before to prepare, like, I don't know, two, two and a half weeks. <laughs> that could be pretty interesting, right? Yes, three weeks of preparation, better than three days of preparation when it comes to playing Coastal Carolina. The Athletics' Bruce Feldman reports that Charlie Brewer, remember him, has won the starting quarterback job at Liberty, Jerem. What does that do for your confidence in BYU taking on the Flames and getting a win at Liberty? Well, Charlie Brewer is the man who helped end the streak uh, against Utah. Oh, Cam Rising in Plymouth. Da, 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 da. BYU ended the streak. I don't care who the quarterback was. Uh, the Pac-12 champs went down. And, uh, yeah, don't forget about Bentley Hanshaw, by the way, a uh, BYU tight end who transferred to Liberty. So a couple of connections there in this game. Yeah, pretty cool. I like that uh, Charlie Brewer is the quarterback at Liberty. Why not beat him on another team? Let's go. Let's go 2-0 <laughs> and against Charlie Brewer, wherever he is. Chuck, big game boomer has BYU versus Utah. It's the third most bitter rivalry in college football. Is this a ranking we can both get behind? Listen, BYU and Utah are certainly volatile. But any list that has Michigan, Ohio State down at number 10, yeah. I'm immediately questioning. Like, Michigan, Ohio State needs to be way higher. The Iron Bowl, I know that's been dominated by Alabama, but Alabama-Auburn, I mean, like, listen, the BYU-Utah rivalry is not burning down like these sacred oak trees and doing all of this stuff, right? Like, that history alone should put the Iron Bowl and Ohio State-Michigan higher on the list, and so that's where I have a question about it. BYU-Utah's top 10 for sure. Oh, yeah. I we're talking bitter. We're not talking competitive or even interesting. We're talking bitter. And BYU-Utah yes. is the only one Correct. with a religious element attached to it. So it certainly goes into the top five. But yeah, Michigan-Ohio State should be number one. Toledo Bowling Green, I just think it really should have been at 13 there. That was crazy. <laughs> Unbelievable oversight on Toledo and Bowling Green. Uh, the Chicago Bears tweeted a video of Kyrus Tonga with an interception at practice. Love to see the big man coming up with interceptions. How long until the Bears insert a Kyrus Tonga offensive package into their scheme, Jerem? They have a history of handing the ball not to Walter Payton in the 85 uh, Super Bowl there, 86, I guess, but to uh, William the Refrigerator Perry. Kyrus Tonga, don't forget, scored a touchdown against Idaho State on BYU TV in 2019. Get Kyrus and that frothy blonde hair the ball at the goal line. <laughs> yes. With the history of the fridge, come on, it needs to happen. 
We just need to come up with a nickname for Kairos when he's running the ball at the goal line, yeah. right? We, he need, it's not going to be as good as the refrigerator, but it's got to be something like that. Maybe we call it the meat packer. I don't know. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Like, uh, it's something. The, the French has a great nick, uh, quote. He said, when I was little, I was big. Built Bar is partnered with BYU yeah, again, yeah. this time releasing a cougar tail flavored bar. How many boxes have you already purchased? Uh, I've not purchased a box yet, but I certainly will. I love the puffs, man. I'm all about the uh, the coconut and the churro. Why not a cougar tail Built Bar puff? And there's a great message and directive behind the, you know, unveiling of this flavor. It's, it's really cool. It deals with Cosmo skydiving into the stadium, so I really like it. I will support that effort. I will buy a box as soon as I can. Yes, but will you buy more Samoas from the Girl Scouts is the question. Uh, it's for the Built 5, 12 <laughs> foundation that helps fight childhood hunger. We know that Jason Shepard, although he doesn't get a ton of carbs, he will buy at least 17 boxes of this, which is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, good. Chef's all in. He's all in on the Built Bar Puffs for sure. All right, Jeremy, coming up, the top five season opening wins for BYU football as we usher in top five Tuesday. And there have been some epic wins in season openers. And Dave McCann is to my left. He's already here. He previews AFR coming up, tells us his best secondaries in BYU football history. He's already ordered a dozen of those puffs. This is BYU Sports News. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history, there is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're here for you. Call us today. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake and Greg Rubel. When I was younger, I was a better dancer. Don't show any more dancing. Or, yeah, okay, good. <laughs> I think we've developed some really good habits the last couple weeks and, and looking to step it up again. A lot of great things can happen when they carry. Not bad. That's good stuff. Hey. Yay. Yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Get yourself ready for the BYU football season tonight at 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app. As Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler, David Nixon, take a look at Keenan Peely, Lopini Katoa. He's going to dive into your living room or phones, whatever, Tyler Batty, and more tonight on After Further Review, only on the BYU TV app. Great to have you on BYU Sports Nation. Jerem Jordan, Spencer Linton in New York. Uh, he gets, uh, you know, he's just going to go jump on a jet ski uh, in the water there for a sec. But I've got Dave McCann here in studios. We look ahead to AFR tonight and the end of fall camp today, which is crazy. Today's the last day. They have a scrimmage. That catch by Lapini, uh, the, the picture we just saw, might be the best catch or one of them in school history. Not the most meaningful because, you know, won, some won games. Yes. But the way he laid out and pulled that thing in for a running back coming out of the backfield, awesome. We're going to look at a bunch of angles of that. Um, and Zach threw it where it had to be, but the catch was spectacular. The thousand, one of Lapini's greatest moments. The thousand people that were in the stands at the Boca Raton <laughs> Bowl. Spence was, uh, Spence's wife was having the baby, Brittany. Um, and I was on the other end, and I was, everyone was like, whoa! Like, the reaction was, did that just happen? Like, was that real? Uh, that and much more coming up tonight on the AFR. But 
Final scrimmage, final practice today as BYU establishes some more of that depth and gets ready for USF. They turn their attention with a week and a half right. to go with uh, USF. How do you feel fall camp has gone? What, what has been a surprise? What have you liked so far? Well, I think the biggest thing is that it's been injury-free for the most part. And when I say that, I don't mean Nick free, but I mean free of this person's out for the first month. We had a bunch of that last season. Remember, Puka and Sampson had hamstring issues yep. in camp as two of the newcomers on that receiving core. But so far, and we'll knock on the desk because the, today and then <laughs> and and the, the camp's <laughs> over here. But um, I think that's been the biggest thing. Everything else has been business. Uh, the, the line's back, except for a couple of new guys, but they were here in spring. Uh, the running backs are back, except for the new guy. He was here in spring. Uh, the receivers, as you know, are, are stacked. They're back, and, and the quarterback's back. Um, and then all those guys on defense, it, it hasn't been a, hey, how are we doing this? It's been, uh, let's do this better because we, we, know, we know how it is. And when you look at South Florida, they're breaking in a new quarterback. You look at Baylor, they're breaking in a new quarterback. You look at uh, Oregon, they're breaking in a new coach. There's and newness and quarterback. There's newness everywhere, but, but not here. And I think it's been a business-type fall. And I think that's because, and, and I said this before, this might be the most experienced in terms of just familiarity and guys yeah. who have been here. Team in BYU history, because of COVID, Dave, all these guys have extra years. We wouldn't have Gunnar Romney here right. and Christopher Brooks if it wasn't for that extra year. And Laotea has been here 10 years. It's been amazing. <laughs> right? It's crazy. <laughs> it's like, isn't Gabe Summers like a super scene? No, it's great to have these guys because fall camp typically is like we're asking not what or how, but who. We're not asking who in hardly anything. We're asking can they be better in this area? And, and when you return a senior quarterback, it's a special time at BYU, too. I think you can see Kalani's strategy, too. There, there aren't any return missionaries in this mix, meaning guys that just got back. Where in years past, that hasn't always been the case. And then they usually get hurt. That's, that's the, that's. And so Kalani said, hey, I want, I want gray shirts. I want guys sitting out. Give yourself a year before you put your body back into combat. Uh, and, and this is that team. When you look at the roster, you're going, you know what? The return missionary guys are all waiting where they, sh where they should be. They're waiting, they're eating, they're lifting, they're getting ready, and then we'll see them next year. But we I, don't. I walked past a host of freshmen on day one of fall camp that I thought should have been in practice, but they're probably in that situation. If you don't know what a gray shirt is, basically if you have fewer than 12 credits, your clock doesn't start right. on your eligibility, but you can get familiar with the playbook, you can get stronger, you can get ready to go, and BYU football hopes a year after a mission that they can't don't have to throw certain people into the fire. And I think BYU is getting the, uh, the depth they require. We were talking about the secondary as well, Dave. I want to get your thoughts on this group. Caleb Hayes is very high on them. He feels very confident. Um, there have been some good secondaries in BYU history. If this secondary plays out to be very good, where do you think they could land when all is said and done? Well, the, I think the standard was set in 96 with Morgan and McTire and Ellison and Sampson. They were all seniors. Pretty good. They were making contributions from the first game and, of course, the interception in the Cotton Bowl to beat Kansas State in the last game. Uh, when I think of the best, I think of that group. I, I remember Irvin Lee against Miami, played spectacular, knocked that ball away to seal that win. But I think the standard is the 14-1 and one season, which means they were durable and they had a decent schedule. And they finished against a, a, a good team that was nationally ranked. Um, and so they set the standard. Well, you look at this group, and they're seniors. They've got experience. They've got speed. They've got depth. Much like that team in, in 96, they just have to prove it. And, you know, and it will start against Bohannon, who threw against him last year. And he's going to try to throw against him on September 3rd. And, and then we will see immediately, hey, you know what? They can't throw on those guys. Um, I mean, McTire and Morgan combined for seven picks. Ellison had like 25 solo tackles. They were all over the place. The other team, the rest of the team was good. Uh, the rest of this BYU team is good. Chance for these guys back there to really be the next level difference makers. Let's talk Cougars in the NFL. So many guys right now trying to make rosters. A lot of established guys and veterans as well, led by Fred Warner as a player. Um, last night we had Monday Night Football. Yeah. We were opposing guys, right? Um, it was yeah. going to be great before Zach got before hurt. Before Zach got hurt. It was going to be great. S still fun, I guess, with Kai and, and Tyler yeah. there. But um, what's one of your favorite uh, NFL Cougar on uh, versus Cougar matchups that we've ever had? I had to think about it, and then I thought, wait a second. In September of last year, the Lions played the 49ers, 
It was 41 to 33 for San Francisco, but Jamal had 54 yards rushing on nine carries, and then I think he had eight or nine receptions for 56 yards, scored a touchdown, and then Fred led the Niners in tackles with 11. And so you got the all-time leading rusher, BYU, against the best linebacker in the NFL tackling each other. And that was a That's great Fred picture Fred. of Fred tackling Jamal. And uh, I just thought, you know what? When has that happened in school history? Yeah. Guys like that who have been so good here go to the next level, and they're pretty good over there. And Fred's exceptional, and Jamal's still trying to – but he's a journeyman. He's endured, and he's making a lot of money. Uh, trying to, he's on the Lions, so, you know, our hearts go out to him. But <laughs> – Hard knocks all When those guys can play each other, I just think that's cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. We had a Monday night matchup with Detmer and Steve Young one time. Yeah. We had a Super Bowl with Andy Reid, Daniel Sorensen, and Fred Warner. There have been some pretty cool matches. I think we're going to have more this year than we've had in a long time. We've had Van Noy tackling Taysom, I think, a couple of times. Yep, that's fun. That's fun. Well, check out After Further View tonight, 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app. Uh, You'll make your way around the studio a little bit later. Yeah, yeah, we'll see you tonight. A-listers tonight. We're we're that close to kickoff. These are the guys that have to be spectacular. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Okay, coming up, the top five season wins and a rising shout-out to a young man who inspires us with his fight for recovery. This is BYU Sports Nation. Luxurious blanket. Getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. Gather the family for a midweek pick me up with an all new lineup Wednesdays on BYU TV. Is that cool? Is that okay? You want inspiring? Yeah, we got that. Fun? Definitely. And surprising? Well, you'll just have to find out. Enjoy a marathon of good works to lift and inspire you for the rest of your week. See it all Wednesdays on BYU TV or anytime on the free app. It's my senior year, but I still have so much to do. Doing what's right isn't always easy. You can't let this injustice stand. I'm not you, Polly. You bought a factory. We're supposed to make these decisions together. I have no idea what your future holds, but I believe that you can change the world. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Download the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Subscribe, rate, and review. It is Top 5 Tuesday from Provo and New York. We look at the best season opening wins in Cougar football history. Start us off with number 5, Spence. You got a Texas A&M 1979. This game actually took place in Houston. Texas A&M was renovating. BYU won the game on a two-point conversion, 18-17. The upset victory began an 11-1 season. The only loss for BYU that year came to a Lee Corso coached Indiana team due to a missed field goal. BYU finished the season ranked number 13. Mark Wilson had his appendix out like just a few days before. Wild story and a huge win. Number four, BYU versus Nebraska in 2015 makes the list purely on the Hail Mary, of course. Taysom Hill. Great game through three quarters. Liz Frank, not a fan of hers. He goes out on that play or after this. And then, of course, Tanner Mangum throws a 42-yard prayer to Mitch Matthews, the most elite play of his career, to win the game 33-28, considered one of the great games in the Bronco era. And BYU history. Night. 
1996, Jerem, again, Texas A&M. I don't know what is it about the Aggies. <laughs> BYU wins a 41-37 shootout in 1996. Steve Sarkeesian threw for 536 yards, six touchdowns. That win set up the Cougars on a 14-1 season, number five final ranking. Great game made better with a call by Brent Musburger. 12-year-old me like an idiot wore a maroon shirt to this game, which is Texas a and colors. <laughs> number two, 2009, number 20 BYU upset, number three Oklahoma in a 14-13 win at AT&T Stadium. At the time, Cowboys Stadium in Dallas, right before the half, Heisman Trophy winner Sam Bradford knocked out of the game by Colby Clawson, and Max Hall yells, we're gonna win, going into the locker room. Dennis Pitta apparently made some plays in this game, but McKay Jacobson has the game-winning touchdown right there as the Cougars go 11-2 and finish ranked number 12. At numero uno, 1984, unranked BYU. Unranked, coming off a season where they're number seven. They upset number three, Pittsburgh, on the road. Defensive battle, only points before the half. A field goal by the Cougs. Pitt had two quick touchdowns in the third quarter, but BYU fought back and won the game 20 to 14. That touchdown pass right there to Adam Haysburg put BYU up. First live college football game on ESPN in the start to BYU's national championship season. A well-deserved number one. Hey, BYU shows up in season openers, man. Let's go. That's top five Tuesdays. The best season opening wins in BYU football history. Our question of the day. What are your expectations for this year's BYU defensive back group? Our elite voice of the day is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. At BYUSN Groupie, we're checking with the honor code to see if that is okay. Uh... I expect absolute <laughs> swagger through the highs and lows of 2021. Guys like Malik Moore never lost a drop of confidence. Yeah. I expect that again this year, but to a whole new level with a massive boost in depth and talent. We'll see if this secondary is as good as we think. Today's Rise and Shoutout presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Rise and Shoutout to Easton Olivson. If you aren't familiar yes. with this story, he's the 12-year-old Little League baseball player from St. George, Utah, who after his team made it to the Little League World Series, fell from a bunk bed, suffered serious head injuries. Easton continues to fight to recover and is showing progress. He's now walking in the hospital with little to no help and is expected to be able to transfer back to Salt Lake City next week after another procedure. Yesterday, he received a box from BYU football that included, as you can see, a number 50 BYU uniform with Olufsen, on the back, signed by Kalani Satake. His family told us this morning, quote, that box brought him a sense of emotion and joy that we haven't seen in a while. So thank you to BYU. So rise and shout out to you and your family, Easton. Keep fighting, get better, and continue to be an inspiration, man. Yeah, I love that so much. And that number 50 was his baseball number. So well played by BYU in so many accounts, Jeremy. Love that. We love Easton and the Oliversons. Thanks to today's guests, Tyler Algier and Kainakua. Conversation continues 24-7, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, even TikTok. Uh, use the hashtag BYUSN. Sorry to Dennis Pitta, we ran out of time for Spencer. I'm Jerem. Shout out to Urban Lee. Go Cougs!